All right, this is another tutorial for the RC505 Mark II. This time I will be covering the sync and retrig functions on the machine. Really quick, I want to mention last time I talked about control functions, which changes what your buttons do. You may think that you can no longer go into your track settings because you have changed a track button to a different function. You can access all the track settings by pressing loop and turning the first knob into the corresponding track. Once I push it, it will bring me into all of the track settings. Thank you and enjoy. So, what are the sync and retrig functions? These are settings that you can find in the effects that have a sequence, such as filter, transpose, all that stuff. The sync and retrig functions are important to learn as they can help out with your techniques involving the sequencer. I'll be going over these functions and give a demonstration of how you can use these. So first, we're going to go over the sync function. So now if we go to an effect, so here we have transpose, if we go to the right, you're going to see sync and retrig. Now basically what sync does, it allows you to restart the sequence after a certain amount of time, and when it restarts, it'll hit back on the first step. So here's an example. So I have a sequence that's using three steps uh, with a robot here. If I turn it on, this is what it sounds like. Since sync is not on, all that's happening is the first three steps of the sequence are being repeated. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But if I turn on sync, you're going to see that the sequence will actually restart from a certain point. And that's going to be after one measure. So as you see, the sequence was repeating every measure, which is every time this light hits red and starting on the first step of the sequence again. So how can you use this and how can you change this? Well, you can abuse this if you want to have an odd timed sequence and you want it to restart at the first step at a certain amount of time. You can actually change when it restarts by simply going into loop, going into play, go to the right twice, and you're gonna see the first knob says loop length. Right now it's set to one, which means one measure. So as you saw, the sequence was restarting every measure. So if I set this to two, you're gonna see it's gonna sound different. So now we effectively have a longer sequence and it only uses three steps in the sequencer. So how can we take this further? So we can use this by having the sync on one measure and we can actually change the sequence while it's happening with sync and get an even longer sequence. So for this, I'm going to change this third step from plus seven to plus five back to plus seven. So now if I combine this technique, changing the third step from seven to five and finding a way to increase the sequencer max step to 16 and turning off the sync, I can have a really long sequence just by abusing sync and changing the steps. Right now I have programmed all 16 steps to have a more complex melody. Yeah, so that sounds pretty cool. So here in the assigns, I have used this button, track three effects, to turn off sync in the transpose. And I have another assign that will change the sequencer max to 16 steps instead of three steps. And by doing all that, you can do all of this. Uh So now my sequence is even longer by using a repeat of three steps with a function, or with a sync function, switching it to 16 and turning off the sync with an assign. And now we have, I think it's 32 steps. This is a bit complex for the sequencer, but I think it's probably the only way you're going to get some advanced techniques out of the sequencer. 
I also want to mention that it's possible to get an extra note in your sequences by using the switch found uh, outside of the sequencer. If you turn off the switch here, what happens is the original parameter for what's being sequenced will be used instead. You can turn the switch back on and off to switch between the one note and the sequencer steps. Lots of loopers have used this technique. I'm just putting it out here for anyone who doesn't know. So what Retrig does is it allows you to start the sequence on the first step whenever you actually turn on the effect. So right here, I have a sequence going at dotted eighth notes and there's six steps. And you'll notice that the sequence will only start when I turn on the effect. Uh... So another thing is I can abuse this by having a sequence in which the end is different the, than the original notes that I have in the robot, letting me have a similar 32 step sequence just by uh, abusing how the steps are repeated. So I have my steps here, minus one, plus seven, plus four, plus five, and plus 12 for the rest. And when I take off the transpose, I will get my default robot note which is a different note than I have in the sequencer. So here's what it would sound like. Basically, sync allows you to restart the sequence um, and you can change this via the settings in the loop. And the retrig function allows you to start the sequence whenever you turn on the effect. So I hope you can use this for new techniques. It really helps you get around faster around your sequencer. And now you can do stuff like this. All right, that's pretty much it.